What's happening, world? Happy Friday. Hey, what to another good? episode of Kanye Confessionals. I'm your host, Deshaun, here at Where Media Meets. It's conjunction with VJ TV Network, Feral Films, History in the Making Entertainment, Keep It Cloudy Productions. You no. Know? It's here doing what we do as usual. I'm your host, Deshaun. You know? Uh, what's good, world? Hope everybody having a good Friday. You know, summer is uh, officially over, as they say, unless we get a summer. What they say is fall now. It is fall. Pumpkins and all that shit. Yeah. But so first, they say. Yeah. So first, I want to, you know, want to rest in peace to Coolio. You know, the man. I we lost a we lost a good one yesterday uh, the other day. Real pioneer you know, in the game. Yeah, let's rest in peace to Coolio, you know, that's... You know, he had a cooking channel or a show or something not too long ago. I was watching so Oh, I ain't getting He was that. chefing and stuff. That's what's up. You know, they laid uh, Kenny Red to rest yesterday, too. Rest, rest, in, rest peace. in peace. to the, to the OG. You to know the concrete saying? general. Yeah, you know. It's been, it's been a crazy week. You know, they had that fucking shooting at the school in Oakland over here not too long ago. Yeah, yeah my little day. young folks that got was... called up in that, uh, got hit shot five times in that. Ooh. I brought the boy Man. home from the hospital. Oh. Yes, how long I know him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hogged, him, hogged him from the hospital and, uh, you know, Hope just, you know. hands to all those affected by that. I mean, we got to do better, town. We just went Seriously. to dinner on Tuesday night. Damn. And, you know, to get that news Wednesday afternoon that, uh, you know, but... He woke now. Mm-hmm. He responsive. You know what I'm saying? He, he got a long road to recovery, but he's going to pull through. That's good. Well, all praise to the Most High for healing and all those families. And mm-hmm. that's just, I mean, we, I'm, you know. What's up, Candace? We, I'm just, you know, I'm kind of flabbergasted. I'm over a lot of the fuck shit that, you know, goes on. I'm really disappointed, people. though. You know. I'm really disappointed, though. I I'm, I'm going to keep it a buck. There's a reason why. When I was a kid, mm-hmm. I was up at the high school, I remember some gangsters got on one of my partner's helmets, mm-hmm. and they came up to the school with a pistol. Mm-hmm. And one of the counselors came out, mm-hmm. and he said, get out of here! And they took the pistol, and it went. He even followed up and went to the hood and found these dudes and was like, leave my student alone, this and that, and they was like, well, tell the youngster to stay off the turf, and he good. They respected, and these dudes were straight killers. Yeah. These dudes went into the school and shot the counselor and shot everybody. That's some really dangerous individuals to be in the we, society. We but peep, but peep this. I don't know if anybody's noticing, but you haven't seen any descriptions, no descriptions of the vehicle, or anything in any of the media. Mm-hmm. And they have it all on video. So why? think about why. And I'm going to tell you, because it wasn't young black men that pulled this off. Right. I was I was gonna get into that. You know what I'm saying? Cause think about it. There's I mean, some yeah. couple individuals running around here who are so dangerous that they would come into the middle of a school and shoot janitors and counselors and everybody to get what they want. Mass shootings in schools don't happen more. by melanated people. Yeah. And but on this particular mass shooting, you don't even have a description. People, the public should be warned of, of who's that large. You know what I'm saying? Because these dudes obviously have no regard for life. Right. But yet you don't have that. And that's, you know, and just here in the Bay Area, man, we just got to demand better of the media. Because trust me, if that have been three young black men who did this, they would have they been pictures, plastered over man, everywhere. Just exactly. like we went into, tonight I want to go into just continuing off of the conversations of what we was having last week about representation. The pen is mightier than the sword. Yes. You know, because, uh, yeah, to this, to the shooting, because I heard it, it was a non melanated person of mm-hmm. people that did this. And I was yes. like, wow. And they heard nan description, nan nothing mm-hmm. yeah. in the news. But to the average person, viewer who saw the clips or whatever, and it's Oakland and whatnot, you're going to think instantly, oh, it was some niggas. Yeah. On some bullshit. And I don't and, think that's unintentional. Oh, it's not. Everything is on purpose. Because they try to paint this 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 scenario that one particular group of minorities is these hardworking, mm-hmm. earnest people, yeah. good citizens, and thus we should allow more 
to come in and yeah. nobody should be against them. And this other group is this violent, deranged. Yeah. Stuff that when you think of Oakland gangs, the face of Oakland gangs is, is, oh, is black have gangs. We have turfs. But the actual gang problem in Oakland is actually the shootings, the extortions, the drug right. trafficking, the whole and nine is not it's not black gangs that are the, doing this. The true description wouldn't help is it wouldn't benefit the gentrification process that's exactly. going on in Oakland right now. It would not. So you don't know. be so don't be so don't be so don't be fooled. Because this is the only mass school shooting I've ever seen that two days later you don't even have a description Nothing. of of who of who did this. All schools have cameras now. It's kinda of like protocol. Yeah. But it's, it go beyond. It go beyond that. They actually, it's, they actually know exactly who did it. That's the thing, you know? and um, uh, we need to start holding, like you said, the media, the press, the reporters, the, yeah. the, the, the all. They need to start being held accountable for what you present and represent when you put yeah. things out. Yeah. And you so would hold. Y'all get talking about black on black crime. In fact, I I, I see I got a bunch of people I see on Facebook that always ranting man. about black on black crime. This and that. But I haven't even seen them even repost the prayers for the victims or nothing. Because mm -hmm. some of y'all are carrying water for white supremacy and don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. This media thing, like he said, the pen is mightier than the sword. These people have manipulated you into a narrative that you're going along and you pair it in what they talking about right. without even realizing it. Because these people are good at this. They signing on to it. It's a multi-billion like dollar business. They are I very mean, good at manipulation. Ignorance, ignorance is a multi-trillion dollar industry. Yes. But we can't afford to be that. I hate to use words like woke, but we got to wake up and see what's going on. There's an obvious agenda across the media, across Everywhere. real life gentrification, and they plan in our faces with it. So oh, we got it. All we in gotta, your face. You know, so they're dragging just, they nuts all across your chin right now and you don't even know it. In fact you tell you think them, your thank beard you, man, growing no, that's ball hair is going across your face. Yeah, thank you, man. I have another. <laughs> uh huh. See Motisa? I don't like the word woke because of the way it's been co opted it's been but let's say aware. Y'all yeah. just just be aware of what's going on. The next time you post something bashing other black people or this and that or saying any type of thing, ask yourself, how did I formulate this opinion? Exactly. Have I been manipulated too? And the manipulation yep. is subtle. They don't send you an email saying, here's the manipulation. It's subtle. Exactly. They get people that look like us to say certain things. They'll use the yeah. black man to bring down the black woman and the black woman to bring down the black man. And, I, and once again, my bad. I apologize for calling y'all black. Y'all not black. But I just use it because that's how some of y'all relate to each other. So I try to talk to y'all on the, you know. What's up, White Out? And the cool uh, part about it is Malcolm X, 50-something years ago, told mm -hmm. us that they will get one of us and use them as the as as the, as the the thing. I mean, like, we it. was told this 50-something years ago, and that's why I say they playing in our face, because they still operating out the same playbook, and we it's like we haven't caught on. Exactly. Right, and well, Malcolm yeah. X said, who taught you to hate yourself? Yeah. We got... What's up, White Out? Yeah, you know, we got so many... We we caught in a, in a storm, and I say we, I include me in that, because I'm not above or below anybody. I just happen to know... I don't know everything, but like I said, I know half of something. And watching... You know, every what's going on all throughout, just not here in the Bay, just in the world and everything in general, watching it, it's just like, once you, and like you said, the woke, the woke community, it's a bastardized term now because it's not, the true essence of it is everybody want to be woke now. And it's, like you said, aware. I still will say woke, but just overall... The term has been watered down, and and yeah. just like any movement that we build, has been watered down and infiltrated. Um, but watching all the stuff with the media, the movies they put out, the representation, and like we talked about last week, with just because you put a bunch of black actors in a movie, you know, the typical thought from the other side is they gonna run to it because it's them, and we do. Yeah. Hook, line, and sinker with, oh, man, this is a representation of us and and who wrote the yeah. fucking story. 
somebody that don't look like you, don't really give two fucks about you, and can never relate to you molecularly. But they got us so pigeonholed that they'll put certain ones up front and say, hey, like, I'm going to call her name, Issa Rae. Mm -hmm. They got her out there. Some kind of way, They, she became one of the gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. She went from YouTube to a, a gatekeeper. Like, you got to go through her to, to really get on, get on HBO. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, she started propagating this, we support everybody black. Okay, that sounds good on the surface. But then when you realize that the gatekeeper is half half African mm -hmm. and she fills up her shows with other Africans and Caribbeans and then puts out certain messages that don't necessarily reflect us native-born blacks, and you got to be like, oh, okay, they put one up front who look like us, mm -hmm. but it's not like us, and then they have that person keep saying support everybody black, and we say support everybody black, and then they march out a bunch of bullshit with exactly. black faces on it, but we in a trick bag because we got to support it. Everybody black. Hey, man, remember, all skin folk ain't you kin folk, and the and sad truth is that's real. That is the truth. All Facts. skin folk ain't you kin folk. Um, there's always, there will always be people who serve a hidden agenda. It yes. sucks, but there will be. Will it end? Uh, probably not in my lifetime. In my spiritual time, it will, but not in my physical life time I don't believe it will it'd be great if it did um, it's gonna definitely end though with everybody that I come in contact with cause, cause the I'm mass awakening <laughs> and this is once again on the woke woke term Ooh, my cousin Mother Earth is, just said is something just up. said a word about the music oh right oh yeah cause we finna, I was finna get on that too right right on to what you had and the music what we listen to what we everything is and I'm not against art cause I, I love art. Art is an expression of right. self. Art is an expression. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's one of the celestial beings. If you understand what you need to understand, art is definitely one of the principles. But when it goes into vibes, vibrational music. There's a reason why they went from B12 to uh, 45's music. Mm -hmm. When they recorded music, so just to give y'all something that y'all don't know, this is one of them things you can get at 3 in the morning. Initially, when they recorded albums live, you understand that when you were recording the music, the vibration and energy you was giving off, it was also being pulled in mm -hmm. while they recorded these live music. So when you replay them on an album, LP, 45, or full-length album, that same give and take of energy was present. Mm -hmm. Facts. You know, so live albums were always so powerful in the fifties and the sixties. So it's, and so live at the Apollo, right. and, you know that energy exchange of music. Because even in cartoons, you got it. They gave you all the answers in cartoons and things when we were kids. A lot of people didn't pay attention. They say music tames the savage beast, and all these things they tell you. Music is the vibrations that you want. water boils at a certain degree. Mm -hmm. You're your DNA and everything in your core responds to certain hurts, just like when water boils. It, it's, it's a reflection or response to an element. So, but like I said, that's a lot to go into that. But when you listen to the music that you that's popularized today, and the way they move from albums to CDs to now everything streaming, mm -hmm. and a stream from a computer is a is like a laser pointer. I'll say um, it's not the same organic. And when I say that, I mean far as the energy exchange. There's a different energy exchange and different reason, purpose why the music is the way it is now. But when you're constantly exposed to the same. When it comes to women rappers, of mm -hmm. it's about my ass and I got the the best pussy in the world and I'm sucking motherfuckers out the water and and it's what you gonna do for me mentality. Mm -hmm. 
I like bars. Don't get me wrong. Some of this shit be witty. Some of it, but not a lot of it. But a lot of the shit. But even is if it's basic. bars or witty, it's a certain level of. It's almost like a certain Talk. level of degeneracy. Yeah, it's promoted. Has to be has to be woven into it. Yeah, you can't have no. Well, it's not heavily promoted. The the deep thought thinkers, in on any side, because mm-hmm. in male or female, when it comes to hip hop and whatnot. It's it's everything sex driven and I gotta kill you. I sell the most dope. I got the biggest chains and me and my crew do do it to the fullest. Vibrations in art is the topic, Keisha. Yeah. It's like we we're talking about how female rappers or rappers right. in general, it's almost like they have to include a certain level of degeneracy into Or oh, you ain't getting put on. You know. Regardless of, and you know, some people actually live a completely opposite life of the persona they portray. But you cannot get your money, so to speak, or right. get to the you bag know. unless you, unless I put myself in a sexual situation to where I'm overly, not overly, I'm scantily dressed. It's all about twerking. Remember, I made that post a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. and I said, "Do women dance, dance anymore, or do they just twerk?" Just and I'm, I'm a, once like I said last time I mentioned it. Don't get me wrong. I, 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 hey, the shit, the yeah. shit look good. It look good. I, you know, I'm a yeah. sightly creature. But I mean, just do women dance? Yeah. Is there any diversity to it, or is it just this? Because everybody just turn around and boop, 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 boop. Just like um, speaking of the thing, the audition they're having for, whatchamacallit today, Baddies of the West in Oakland. Oh, And I, yeah. I seen that, and the, you know, and I'm not knocking As the if they don't already have it pre-selected. I'm, <laughs> I'm not knocking none of that, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, uh, I just wonder, do we, they got Suki, right, Keisha, no diversity. Can we got do Suki something else? as one of the judges. That is the most ratchet chick in America. And I've seen uh, a couple of people posting that they was there and whatnot, and I was just like, wow, okay. You know, I, I mean, it's, you Are know, you people feel that, that level of ratchetness. If, if my thing is the, the direction that everybody is herded into, mm-hmm. and the music, like, once again, like we said, music, television movies all the media the, the direction that y'all are mulled into like sheep led to slaughter is for you to get on you got to go down this one path that's it there's no other way yeah you know it's like the days of there being an easy eat and a KRS one is over right everybody got to be twerk 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 and everybody want to be a, a whole asslian you know because I don't say their name on air you know what's funny, Keisha? Keisha has a point that she's annoyed at the fact that the Bay Area is always ratchet, hood, and ghetto. But the thing is, is if you go outside maybe four areas, the rest of the Bay Area is not. Like, you got parts yeah. of Richmond, you got parts of Hunters Point, you got parts of East and West, uh, you got parts of, well, you used to have parts of Palo Alto, but it's been heavily uh, oh, gentrified. Oh, they, they didn't did my second shit. You know, so you got parts of Richmond, but then if you go to the rest of the Bay Area, like 90% of the Bay Area isn't ratchet. So the ratchet, the ratchet gatherness in the Bay Area is what is, you've shown. It's overrepresented. Right. True, true. And I mean, some people coming out, be coming out of six, seven hundred thousand dollar houses acting a fool. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Because they want to be on. They want to be down. It's like, like you said, back in the day, you, could you imagine, like, if there was a hood in Alameda? Right. Back in the day. Remember, Ali Alto used to try to sell it like it was on. And, and happy birthday to Ali Alto. Oh, yeah, happy birthday, Ali Alto. But uh, I remember, though, back in the day, right across the street from Alameda College, the one apartments, because I used to do the mm. homework in there. That's now, Ali that Alto was, was where... From. That's where Ali Alto now, was Now, don't get me wrong. That's where a bunch of low-housing people from over here moved to Alameda, and them apartments was kind of ratchet. Yeah. And I will say that's that. That's what Ali Alto wrote. <laughs> um... But Alameda was wholesome overall, Wonder Bread. Yeah, overall was. Because remember, was we used bad. to take our hat. You crossed Park Street Bridge. You crossed the bridge mm-hmm. off Twenty Third, and you took your hat off as soon as you crossed the bridge because you didn't want no problems. 
Man, because I would have he was going to give it to you. They Keisha is saying, Oakland, uh, uh, what she's saying is the representation from the black people. Well, Keisha, you got to understand, a lot of black people from Oakland, or not necessarily from Oakland, from the Bay Area, have saw that the lane, this was the lane. Like, for instance, Pinole mm -hmm. has always been a nice area. Mm -hmm. Always been nice. It was nice in the... 80s and the 90s is still nice to this day. A lot of, even though they claim Richmond. Hey, right, White out. I, I was too. Even though they <laughs> claim Richmond, there's a lot of Bay Area representatives who are actually from Pinole. They went to Deanza High, whatever. They're actually from Pinole. They grew up in very nice houses, but the, but the music and the representation that they put out can only be described as ratchet, but the, when they was coming from Four bedroom, two bath, relatively new houses. So, mm -hmm. and so I say all that to say that the representation of black people from the Bay Area has been ratchet, but many of the people perpetuating that representation didn't don't come, come from don't, that. Lower don't income. come from that at all. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's like it's just like even even with the sideshow. Right. Look how it went. The sideshow when I was a kid was used was. You you cruise the lake, mm -hmm. be at Eastmont. Don't get me wrong; people would spend donuts. Some it was whatnot. more of a social gathering. Exactly. Yeah. It really it was it was parking lot pimping. Yeah. Basically, the side show was not back then. Was parking lot pimping. There might be two or three cars spinning, and, and spinning, everybody out everybody just chilling. Checking. Especially right. when it was in Eastmont parking lot. Exactly. That's what it was. But now it's all this extra shit. But then you had people from other areas coming because we the soil yeah. was the soil, and. You know, it was it was uh, highly liked and gravitated to because I mean, it's like a magnet. The town is a magnet. Well, when I was a youngster, it was such a black thing that when some uh, other would come, they it would be to it. the point that they would be identified by that, like, oh, that's Mexican Billy, mm -hmm. or that's white boy. So and so, mm -hmm. like that would be like they was that be their turf name. They would be unique. Whoever you were, and now you could go to a side show name. and not see anybody black yeah. out there. And the side show went from our social gathering Saturday at midnight at Eastmont. Mm -hmm. You might everybody might cruise the streets, but eventually you end up in Eastmont parking lot mm -hmm. and gathering. That was almost the definition of you as a square, or not do you be out there exactly. To now, it's 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 dangerous. Yeah, I, I, like I used to go to the side show in my era and prospect and not feel anything, and now I see it. It looks like it's a dangerous thing. Like I would get the fuck away from it okay. now. Cause somebody gonna hit your shit, and they probably ain't got no insurance. And pull a pistol on you. Wouldn't be bad. But the the culture, the 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 bastardization of the town, to your point, Keisha, it's co opted. Yeah, it's it's not a it's a it's a dual. Dual infliction of one, it helps gentrification because the long as the uh, what am I trying to say? Long as the the view is that reaction of negativity when it comes to Oakland, they're winning, and you have people like you said. A lot of the shit that happens in Oakland, I highly doubt it's all people from Oakland doing the shit. Remember when they had the uh, what was it the 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 window smashing the stuff going on downtown Oakland some years yeah. ago, and we were like, a lot of people doing this shit is not from Oakland. Yeah, they come, they tear shit but, up, they act but the, the news, and they go back home. right? The news says it's Oakland. Oakland gone wild. Has it happened in Oakland? It's not. It and and what happens is. The, the grandmas, the big mamas, the uncle earls and all that. Something got to be done. And they and they or they long in the tooth like I've lived here and did this all my life. I just wanna live and be peaceful and sit on my porch and drink my gin and I'm tired of this shit and then they sell their house and move on. Fuck the family, we gone. Yeah. Now that 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 melanated Don't y'all sell grandma house on the block. Don't y'all sell grandma house. Is now sold to somebody who ain't got no attachment to this area. And they come in with their entitlement, feeling, oh, I just bought this house. This is my house. Mm -hmm. This neighborhood gonna change. Mm -hmm. 
my family sold grandma's house, and now we don't have a central point of location. And now our, our kids don't know each other, this right. and that, because we don't have that central point. Right. My grandma's house. See, when I was growing up, we had this. She's there, and she's still alive. So. When I was growing up, we all had a central point. That everybody came. We all knew each other. Even the ones that didn't hardly come around, but we all knew each other. Mm-hmm. Without that central point, a family becomes pointless. Now, I've yeah. become a central point for my generation, but you know, that. our previous generation and our kids, they don't know each other because we don't have a central, this is where we are going for Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. This is where we are going for Christmas. This is when somebody say, oh, I'm going back home. This is what we're talking about. Even if people mm-hmm. moved out to Antioch, this place, that place, yeah. Christmas and Thanksgiving and everything was always e- e- Easter, right, you don't celebrate that. Right here. Yeah, all them, yeah, you all know them, what I'm saying? All, all them celestial birthdays. gathering days that they took, they made y'all believe are now holidays, that, but they really some other reason. But we ain't going to yeah, get into that tonight. It's, 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 it's wild. And a lot of people cashed out their houses, this and that. But so, that go back to your point that some w- the w- boots from the crew had a song called "Fat Cats and Bigger, Bigger Fish. Fish." That's my shit. And one of one of the themes of the song is that we'll let the gangs and stuff go round, run wild till people feel, are feel be- yeah. to they begging us mm-hmm. to come in. That's the same thing they did on many levels. That's what they let the crack game go wild. To people was black people was in there begging them to do something about it. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's one of the games that they always run. They let the crime go out of control. Like in this last week, suddenly it's been twenty six shootings, seven deaths. This is that all in week. Like okay, man, people ain't even outside like that. Right. And all of a sudden, and then, but you know what? We're about to have a new mayor. Mm -hmm. We're about to have a new mayor. And they want, and certain the powers that be will want to implement change. New police chief, new mm-hmm. this, this, that. So they letting certain shit go on. Right. So people are begging them to come stop it. Mm-hmm. So you get somebody that's that's gonna sit there and tell you, I'm super tough on crime, and it's like I've seen these mm-hmm. um, these different groups on different social media platforms that promote. Uh, melanated crime against a certain ethnic group and ethnic ethnic group, and I'm like, but do you promote other race groups that are committing crimes against this one group, mm-hmm. or is it just you only want to point out when quote unquote niggas do it, you know? And don't get me wrong, crime against elderlies, whatever ethnicity is wrong. I'm with that, but. When you seem like you overtly going out to just point the finger, he, like this is the this is the face of crime against this one ethnic group, and it's like mm, that's not factual. And the media does the same thing on the news. They you know, and I'm trying to keep it clear, and I'm gonna keep it bland as I can because I'm not trying to promote different groups bullshit that they own. But once again, accountability of the media, because the pen is mightier than the sword. As long as we continue to absorb the writings of people who don't have our best intent in in their sight, when they tell these stories, write these movies, make these scripts, do these postings, make these make these podcasts, they make these. Mm-hmm these reality shows they make these anything that to where you verbally hear it or you tuned in watching that your spirit absorbs if they're if your forward progress and uh uplifting is not a part of the fabric of what they're doing you should not be tuning into it and, and and watch how they play with you with these numbers. Mm-hmm. Like for instance, there could have been in two thousand twenty, there could have been seventeen Asian people that got mugged, right? Mm-hmm. And in two thousand twenty two or two thousand twenty one, whatever, it could be twenty eight Asian people get mugged. Mm-hmm. Well, the news media gonna be screaming that the crime is up eighty six percent. Yes, and that sounds alarming. Right, when you don't know the true numbers, because men know, or the, lie, or the true women context. lie, but numbers don't. And numbers... But numbers can be presented out of context. Exactly. It's just like... To this, fit an agenda. Just like sports. Mm-hmm. Prime example of this, the manipulation of something with sports. You can have a quarterback 
for whatever team, and the sports and uh, commentators say, and it, it'll show the stats. He's the number one quarterback from 2015 to 2020 mm -hmm. in this whatever category. Okay, but if you add 2014 or 2021. It takes the whole thing out of the context. He ain't in the motherfucking picture as much as where they want him to be. But, so the but if I'm trying to present an agenda, I give you these out of context I, numbers. Exactly. So... That's uh, something that, once again, representation John of the Penn. media. What's up, brother Alberti? How you doing? Um, representation and accountability in media, all, all assets of the media. You know, we talked about how the media is hella quiet on Brett Favre shit. Brett Favre should be, Brett Favre should be in jail because let me tell you something. If that would have been Michael Vick, who went back to where he was from? They would have Michael Vick printing food stamps yeah. on 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 Facebook Live, exactly. him hand drawing food stamps <laughs> for the next ten years. They would have had him, excuse me, live streamed on Facebook Live, him doing that shit. They would have actually, in whatever sentence they gave him, they would have doubled it and said he was a career offender. Yes. If Michael Vick went back to the state of Virginia they and convinced somebody. That oh my daughter play ball over here. Divert some of these funds and build a stadium and get involved in, and even have text messages where he's saying, "Hey, I'm not gonna get exposed on this." They would have went back to his junior high that yes. he was supposed to, he wasn't gonna win prime king, but he told everybody he was gonna give them free Jello pudding pops for a week. Michael Vick would already be indicted. I'm just saying. There's and no reason why in the world Michael uh, Brett Favre ain't in handcuffs. None. You know they the whopper? Jackson State with Deion Sanders has been selling out. Mm -hmm. They've been selling 50 some. They stadium only hold 50,000. Mm -hmm. Every home game since Deion Sanders been there, they've sold 50,000 tickets. And it's to the point where, but they're in an older stadium, so mm -hmm. they went to the state of Mississippi and said, Hey, we need a, a bigger Lucy, stadium right. because fifty Cal barely pulled fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. So for Jackson State and the state of Mississippi to pull fifty thousand is just it's some unbelievable shit. Mm -hmm. They went to the state of Mississippi and said we need a new stadium, and the state told them, "Fuck you." Yeah, we, we need to practice, practice fiscal responsibility. Mm -hmm. They basically, when Brett Favre said his daughter needed a volleyball stadium, they gave him the money. They, and they stole it. Like they made, they stole it from some other shit and then told people on welfare that, hey. It's all bad. And so, just to get an idea of when you really, when you really know the details of it, mm -hmm. you have to, you keep having to ask yourself, why ain't Brett Favre indicted already? Thank you. And I mean, even to. The media, representation, uh, a bunch of people I'm um, seeing on my timeline, and I, and I actually watched it for research to be able to go in on it. The Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, they got to go from it now for the dude to kill him. Hey, good. I put some <laughs> on his books. I put some on his books. Um, yeah, I was gonna send ten bucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the. Everybody was oh man the Dahmer thing you know and I I watch dark stuff. You know, because I'm into the mental aspect of people, what makes you think, what does that. And I, I watched the shit, and, and here's the thing. So I made a post before I watched it. I made a post that said, you know, I wonder if they made a R. Kelly uh, documentary on how he became how he did, mm -hmm. and, you know, do all the situation with his childhood, with y'all promoted and all this and that like y'all doing this Domer shit mm -hmm. and you know cause I, I heard somebody say R. Kelly was molested people who get molested this and that and somebody said don't be giving that nigga no excuses there was absolutely no mm -hmm. no sympathy for R. Kelly nobody trying to see it from a different perspective and nobody wanted to accept the narrative that hey he was a victim too yeah People just was like, R. Kelly needs to be thrown under the jailhouse. True. But yeah. Some people thought he should be took out back and shot, but now you got Jeffrey Dahmer being humanized? That That's the, the exact, exactly that's why I watched it. Now, and the thing, too, because I made the post, and some some people pointed out, you know the director's a black dude, and he from Richmond. Support everybody black. Exactly. My, <laughs> exactly, I, I, exactly where I'm going. 
And I was like, okay, he did a hell of a job, you know, but I got, I had to watch it. Because after that, I was like, you know something, let me watch it. So I watched the shit. And I'm going to just say this. With the, the privilege of, because the pen is mightier than the sword, the way they played this shit out, they tried to uh, humanize this motherfucker. And I was hella disgusted by the fact that they would try to humanize him. And even from, they went from when his mom was pregnant with him, she was on hella pills and different stuff. That's already playing at people's heartstrings. And it's like, for real, you motherfuckers, oh, really? Jeffrey, he never had the chance. Yes. And that's <laughs> the, I'm like, even though he, he got what he deserved and he need to get more in, in, in hell. Mm -hmm. But, I mean... And the fact that, that they did that shit, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting there watching it like, and I'm already skeptical. Like, I bet they're gonna try to humanize this motherfucker. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I know they're gonna try to excuse and play on some bullshit. And I watch this shit, and I'm just sitting there like, and it, and I'm, once again, we got a black director, and and like I said, as people pointed out, man, you know the director black, and uh, okay, so. We use us, melanated people, to promote this bullshit, this demon that's mm -hmm. in his nature, because that's where they come from. And, the and they humanize this motherfucker. And the story, and even with the, oh, actually, let me let me take a step back before I go into that shit. One, the families now have to relive this trauma mm -hmm. the victim's family and I don't care about their sexual orientation or none of that yeah. shit when I'm saying this life is life these families now have to relive this shit because mm -hmm. now it's a resurgence of popularity in and what happened yeah. and it's oh man let's go see what they up to now oh how did you feel about the movie how did you feel about the series did you get the and they showed um, which is um, this is one of the things that pissed me off well there's several things about the shit that pissed me off but there was one uh, particular victim who was uh, deaf disabled and they sh they went into how his mom when they found out she was deaf and all this and I'm sitting there like you motherfuckers are reaching with the, it was like they needed to fill in for that. I was like, why did you go way into some of the shit they went into? Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, stick to the point of what he did. You know, his and his dad, oh, uh, this, I mean, they tried to humanize this motherfucker on so many levels that I, I was just like, I said, it, I, I was like, this is some bullshit, and it's always been fuck him and his parents. <laughs> And here go the whopper. And his supporters. And it'll always be that. And here go the whopper. The story of the other guy who got killed with him, they don't really tell dude's story too much. But the reason why he got mm -hmm. the business too was Duke remember the white boy out Modesto that killed the wife, the pregnant wife, mm -hmm. and he ended up on death row, but people was having all this outpouring of love. Mm -hmm. The the other dude that got killed with Dahmer, mm -hmm. he killed his wife. And then said a bunch of black dudes came and did it. Right. So what the police did in that city was he Rough gave this description. I'm talking about terrorized. See, I remember this. They, they terrorized mm -hmm. the black community to find these dudes, taking dudes in, torturing them Same to get a confession. Smith. Yeah, exactly. They terrorized the black community, and then there was holes in the story, and they eventually convicted him. But he caused a lot of pain and trauma hey, God, in the black the community. Question. And so when they got a so when dude got a chance to kill Dahmer, dude was dude was not just oh bad luck. No, he killed him too because of the because of the fuck two shit. Two for one. But both of them terrorized the black community in different ways. And so it's 
Peace. <laughs> right. And then, like, in the movie, they showed, like I was saying, the uh, the one victim. I hope so, who too. Was hearing disabled. That percentage. That's what, that's what I was getting on. Mm -hmm. That point. They showed scenes where the mom was trying to sue because the dad was trying to write a book. Mm -hmm. And this shit, I mean, they do the audacity of the motherfuckers to put this shit in the movie and the way they did it, the series. And the, the, the dad was talking to Dahmer's grandmother because she was suffering through dementia and shit. And he was, yeah, I was going to have Sophia Loren play you and shit. I'm like, you mother... <laughs> I, man. And they told... Okay, so they told the uh, the brother's mom, her lawyer or whatever, that she wasn't going to be able to sue, probably wasn't going to get anything mm -hmm. from it. And it just showed that the family, instead of putting the book out that the dad was going to do, he just shelved it because he knew that the proceeds was going to go to the families. Right. So my question... Oh, so he was unwilling to... Yeah, he had plans. He to get paid. He had plans, and they tried to play it off like he was trying to do it for the greater good. I was just hoping to make write this book and all that to... Uh, if anybody else have a kid that's probably going through this to help them. No, you wanted to get rich off this shit. And they, I, dude, I was, I just was like, oh my God. Oh, man. I, I was highly upset with this shit on a, on a real deep rooted spiritual level. Cause to watch something dark, it does something to you. That's one another thing. You gotta be able to. You gotta be in the right space. Yeah. And to receive that energy, and you got to gotta, you gotta be able to defend it and deflect it off. Same reason why we was talking about the things with music, the the media, what they show you all the time to put you in a certain mind state. So I get people. I had certain people that was like, "Man, I'm not watching that shit. I, I, I ain't in the space it. to watch it. I'm not watching it." But I was like, you know, some I'm in a space where I can watch it, so I'm gonna watch it to be able to talk about it. And everything that I went into. Like I know they're gonna do this. They're gonna try to humanize them. They're gonna try to come with all these excuses. Mm -hmm. They did all that shit. And on top of that, like I said, they put a black director on it for. You already knew the game. Is for you black. slabadoos out there, and I ain't calling nobody that's watching right now slabadoos. I'm just speaking to, to the world because there's slabadoos out there that oh man, we got to like you said, just because they black, we got to do it. I support uh, everything that, black. Y'all better be mindful of who you let into your spirit. Because that, that mentality will allow you to allow some real step and fetch it and secret agents to slide right up in and dominate the conversation. All day. Because that shit, I'm sorry, that shit. Yeah. And um, Niecy Nash's character, you know, she was the neighbor. And here's one thing, and I'm going to say this. This is show you the privilege, because they actually played the actual phone call mm -hmm. that um, from the actual lady when she called the police to uh, check, because there was a, he one of his victims, he killed two 14-year-olds. One of them was a 14-year-old Filipino kid that he actually sexually assaulted the kid's older brother before, and it was had to was a registered sex offender that's heavy so wild as fuck yeah this man was operating with impunity he was and one thing that I will say they um put it in here there was a excuse me a black detective and when they arrested him they were talking so the black detective was like so you lived in a in the ghetto basically uh uh you know, a minority community, mm -hmm. so you can hunt. Because you knew it was less police um, surveillance. Mm -hmm. You know, you was able to hunt because you, society's forgotten people are usually left unprotected. And you're able to themselves. abuse them at your leisure mm -hmm. if you know how to meander through the situations. And this was a prime example of that. So, for y'all that don't know, the uh fourteen year old who uh he ended up killing the younger brother had got out and escaped. I've and never seen the neighbor that on the, news. the neighbor who was a sister, her daughter her and her daughter seen the kid he walking out half naked and cause uh Dormer basically tried to do a lobotomy on him, uh, a self you know, home lobotomy. So 
he was all disorientated, but he's running out half naked, and they call the police, and the police come, and Dahmer comes up when they're sitting there talking to the police, and the lady's like, something's wrong with this. This is not, a, this is a little boy. Dahmer comes up, and basically like, no, nah, that's my boyfriend. He's drunk. Mm -hmm. And the police, because... They didn't want to deal with a homosexual situation. Yeah, they gave him back to him. Oh, and dude was oh, all bloody good. and shit. Yeah, I remember that from the news. Yeah, well, this and is people all saying facts. That the police handed dude back over the Dama and, and the Dama went killed. And her and her daughters is like, no, that's a little boy. That's not. No, he says he's eighteen. He says he's nineteen. He, and if they would have took the time to do their job, they should have They should have looked in the dormer and seen, oh, you're a sex offender. We need to check into you more. Yeah, they didn't do this kid. none of that shit, Who's man. bleeding, by the way. Right. How you going to hand back somebody bleeding that's being, obviously being abused, but I guess, and, like you said, they didn't want to deal with it. Right. And so then they played the actual call, not a recreation. They played the actual call mm -hmm. during this series when the, uh, the neighbor played by Nishi Nash called the police and she was like hello um, I'm just calling to check in about the name the situation and it was actually the officer who was there he's like oh yeah that was me well um, I is there, he was okay he, he he just was drunk no she's like no that was he seemed that couldn't be an old enough person he seems like a little kid mm -hmm. no he, he's good they had pictures of them together, so they're good. And now what also pissed me off, which go goes in hand with the supremacy of this, when, because they showed the actor Jesse Jackson went in and, uh, you know, out there ambulance chasing, but rightfully so on this one. Shout out to Jesse. Um, the mayor, who was a new mayor, was under pressure from the police union because the mayor was like, talking to Jesse Jackson, Jesse Jackson like, I'm here to get this shit fixed. I'm not here for the fluff. So they suspended the two officers mm -hmm. and their police union, um, and I'm a union vice president, so this shit, this goes beyond that though. But their union in, the, in this, uh, you know, series, these two officers who handed a 14-year-old kid to his killer without doing their job mm -hmm. were given policemen of the year. How the fuck can... And they probably still policemen are retired now with nice pensions. They got suspended pending and then brought back and were given fucking policemen of the year. That sounds like some hand and glove ass shit. So we talk about um supremacy and things and I'm going to just say this just like when we talked about I, I go back further than Dahmer the Atlanta child murders Ooh, Wayne Williams 81 I remember that shit I was terrified as a kid and I was here living but I still was like wow. I was scared too but that's because I didn't know where Atlanta actually yeah. was so but all I knew Atlanta was around the corner when you had when they finally had a suspect alleged suspect Mm -hmm. The shit stopped alleged, all of a sudden. Actually, it didn't. If you I, it, that, did, it didn't. That documentary, right. yeah. It didn't stop. They just said those other murders they didn't fit the criteria. Right. It, 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 but uh, they really it, only linked him to two murders. Right. Everything else was, they just lumped it in. But you got the authorities in conjunction with the killing of melanated people mm -hmm. and their, their uh, complacency and failure to do their job because the downtrodden community or people, the minorities, the brown, the black, mm -hmm. their their lives are not valued in the essence. And same thing with the Dahmer situation. You hand this 14-year-old kid to his killer. And the fact that... Can you imagine the terror that was going through his mind that he escaped and they handed him back and he knew this man was... And smart. because he couldn't talk and whatnot because dude put a drill drilled into his brain trying to do a, a, a do-it-yourself lobotomy which he was taught that through even with his dad his they, they showed how his dad was teaching him when he was a kid the, uh, they was catching roadkill and dissecting it and all this 
So, and then his dad tried to be the all-around dad and supporting him, and, oh, I should have done this, and all. I'm like, no, nah, you wicked and evil, too. And the mom was like, this your fault, his his birth mom, and she tried to kill herself a couple of times because mm -hmm. the guilt was a motherfucker. I mean, but you got people ranting and raving about this shit. One thing to add about Wayne Williams is that was one of the first times that I called myself woke because I had ended up seeing this special, right? And they had, hey, what's up, Ram? Happy birthday. Happy birthday, and Ram. Had this, and they had this one sister that was on there, and she said, hey, Wayne Williams ain't killed my son. Right. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm watching the mm -hmm. TV, and she said, my son was 6'2", 200, and could fight. They trying to tell me that this A this man over, overpowered my son and killed him? He said, no. Nah, right. Uh-uh, it would have took two, three motherfuckers to overpower my son. This, and... And a couple of people was like, I don't believe Wayne Williams killed my child. Yeah. I was like, they lied. Yeah. They said, even I, one of them said, I believe my son seen him and yeah. was near him because he was doing talent shows yeah. and shit with the kids. Yeah. But they was like, nah. Yeah. Oh, and on another thing, back to your point where you're saying how they took these two policemen and they suspended them mm -hmm. and then they brought them back. Yeah. Right now in our own, right here in Alameda County, Oh. There was a young black deputy who went and killed a husband and wife because he was having an affair. We talked about so they that. went back and checked the record and saw that he shouldn't have, it's psychologically, he shouldn't have been a police. And then they 70, found... 70... Yeah. 73, I want to say. Who were, who quite qualified, particular thing. The new sheriff takes office in November, right? Mm -hmm. You know what the new sheriff said? I want to apologize. They said today, I want to apologize to those officers. And basically, those officers are coming back as soon as she takes office. Like the current person said, mm -hmm. oh, we got to put them on desk duty. We can't have them out took there. They, they took their police duties and their guns away from them. As soon as the new sheriff takes office, them dudes is going right back out there. But they documented mm -hmm. that they are psychologically unfit, unfit to be out there as police. So... Things are going to get real interesting because now they're going to have impunity. It's almost like the same thing you're saying. They fired these dudes, mm -hmm. and then they brought them back and gave, and gave, them, police gave of the them police of the year. Gave of the year. That shit is a slap in the face of slap in the faces, and that's that hand and glove shit. Yeah, it's wild. It's wild. So, man, I want to give a special shout-out to my man, Ram. Yeah, Ram's We're going to be doing it big in an undisclosed location. Yeah, it's Ram's birthday today. Yeah. What y'all drinking? Uh, uh, like Remy. A little Remel. Remy, I'm gonna take a shot. I might do that. I haven't had a birthday shot yet. Oh, oh shit! Let's be the first. Yeah, yeah. Well, Let's first do it. The limo. Let's do it. Thank you, welcome, Ram. One Here's you the making CEO in the building. Yeah, they clean. Nobody drank out of those. Play the tropes. So, we was talking about the Jeffrey Dahmer uh, Netflix. Shit, I haven't looked at it yet. And uh, uh, you know the debauchery with, that goes with. That. I've been avoiding it, but now I'm kind of convinced. It. Like, let me check it out. Certain shit I'll be avoiding, like the Central Park shit, all that. Oh, black oh shit. that, like, that was it. They... Like, that shit gonna have me. Oh, hold on, let me, happy uh, birthday. Okay, hold on, let me let me refill. Let me refill with that. Let's do this right. Yeah. Uh, happy solar return, King. Blessed moon for many more. Thank you. May your bank fold, bank rolling. Increase twenty fold. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so, the uh, just the I mean the the setup of everything. You look at you got the the Mississippi shit with the water. You got Jackson Water. You got Brett Favre still didn't have a money. You got this Dahmer shit they going on. What's up, Law Jerry? What's happening, bro? Um, you got. All these things in the media that are putting us in a different light and basically uh, showcasing white supremacy and and the leadership, even the movies, you know, other movies is coming out. And, you know, I mean, it's it's just. I'd be glad when, when people wake up. And then I saw Negroes on Facebook talking about Jerry said, why these, said happy birthday, right? Why these celeb why these why these celebrities ain't uh did nothing about Jackson. You, you so so you think Oprah Winfrey 
and Will Smith has more responsibility to Jackson than the govern Republican governor who received four billion dollars in funding for infrastructure. They only don't give a fraction like, because they don't want to give up aid. But that's in the black on black crime level. Like, right. hey, the city didn't fix that. You rich? Why you ain't fixing? You because don't love your people? But that's like we said. We don't <laughs> hold each other accountable. We we sit back and and give each other a pass on some lucky things, dollars. We should be yes. We should be held. Jerry Law, check your accountable. Facebook messages. Lucky hey, dollars. Look, check your message, man. You just got sent some. Quit grinning in that profile picture. Um, I just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just my, my, remember, Ram, me and you was talking the other day, and I was just, <laughs> last week, Friday, Yeah. I just was like, when it comes to media stuff and what they doing, I'm just, I'm just over a lot of this bullshit that's put out and, and shown and, you know, the, the masses, the uneducated <laughs> or the, the people that's not willing to put in the work. Not just people in the South. Yeah. Us too, Mark Anthony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, nah, don't say people in the South backwards, because the thing about it, I'm going to tell you, some of the people in the South are geniuses, and you, because a lot of people from the South, their families migrated out here. And mm-hmm. so that's that's the roots. You got to filter the content you take in too, though. True. Because there's so much out there now. Everybody got an opinion on some. Everybody posts everything. And it's low vibrational. A lot yeah, of it. right. Absolutely right. Some Absolutely of it is right. low vibrational, and some of it is completely uninformed content, either intentionally to get to clickbait, as they call it, or just simply like, wow. Now, I'm hella late on something, but I'm, y'all probably already talked about this, but can y'all update me on what the hell happened at King of States? Oh, or the sure. King of you know States. Jewel's son, uh, vice versa, mm-hmm. the bartender... Mm-hmm. At the the bartender, yeah, at, yeah that's sure. her nephew, and that's oh. her big her big sister who was there. That's yeah. her son. Oh, got shot five times in that. Damn! Wow. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And um, wow. what I'm concerned about though is that there's been absolutely the shooters are known. Mm-hmm. There's been absolutely no, no description of them, the getaway I mean, car, none of that. If you look in the media everywhere, there's no description of these of these individuals and these dudes were so determined to put this work in that when the security guard was informed that hey these dudes are coming with guns he attempted to barricade the door and they shot him to get in there and as the person that particular target was running around the classroom they shot two other janitors they shot a counselor and another student and when dude tripped and fell they shot him five times in the back. Wow. These dudes were truly determined to kill some people. And it's just, it, did, you, did anybody pass away? No, no one's passed away. In right. fact, in yeah. fact, in fact, Jewel's son is actually he woke up earlier today. All right. cool. uh, there's no signs of any paralysis. He lost his spleen and part of his kidney, but right. I mean, but overall he's going to make a recovery. That's good. And apparently, like, one of the um, school janitors actually took one to the head, but it didn't penetrate his skull. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And another right. one took a took a gut shot, and he's going to lose part of his colon, and the counselor was all jacked mm-hmm. up. But it's like, this was wild shit. Yeah. Yes. They really went in there and really tried to do that, and it's like, we ain't seen no surveillance footage. We ain't seen no be on the lookout for these dudes and mm-hmm. none of that. And it's like Oakland is the forgotten city. It's, it's some wild shit going because on because it's the one, two. The perpetrators are two. It, like I said, it it does nothing to the gentrification that's going on. If it's you know you putting out there that it ain't no black people doing some killings in Oakland. And Oakland is, the media tell you black people are attacking all Asians, they're attacking white people, and they're attacking each other. There's nobody else committing crimes in Oakland, according to the media. Hmm. Okay. And you got to understand that for somebody that would be willing to come into school, people are like, oh, the school should have security. A person that comes in and shoots the security to get to the person that he's trying to get is a truly dangerous individual. Mm-hmm. These are some really dangerous guys. That's ridiculous. 
you know. You know, I'm just and just like you know, and full recovery. Serial kill- and said about the Stockton serial killer. Yeah, they have killed about five people. They I uh, think they're preying on homeless people in in, in Stockton. Uh, and uh, I mean, that's just yeah. See that I mean, we living in low vibrational situations because. Check them outside. Oh, okay. Let the homie in. I mean, yeah, we. we I mean, low vibrational is. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's really what's going on because, and that sucks because we are, we're you're most people don't have a wide range of content to look at and don't know where to go to get different content, so they're stuck getting the same uh, refurbished garbage, so it affects your psyche. Because we were talking about the Jeffrey Dahmer shit, and why I watched it was one because I wanted to critique the shit, and I wanted to see if they would try to humanize this piece of shit, and they did. And the director's black and from Richmond, so you know you had people trying to, yeah, the director's black, we doing things, and it's like, now nah, you actually can, you actually helping to perpetuate some bullshit. Tiff, Tiff, I was in the building. We got tip in the building, but I mean, you know, when we, we like when I left out, you had said something about we talking about the school shooting, Ooh. school shooting, and it's like this, I, like I told the story a little earlier, and I know Ram them heard it, but uh, I was in a situation, I was in a situation where some gangsters came up to the school when I was in school and they yeah. came up and they had a pistol and they was going down this cat. Mm-hmm. And one of the counselors was basically able to chase them off. But he went one step further because this is them old school type of counselors who really felt responsible for the kids. He went to the turf and found these dudes and told them, don't you come back up to the school. In fact, you need yeah. a dude alone. And they was like, time to stay off the turf. We're gonna leave him, we're gonna leave him there alone. Was, there was etiquette. But them kids nowadays probably would have killed dude for coming to the oh, town sure. trying to, there you was, know. Because even, I mean, don't get me wrong, right is right and wrong is wrong, but there were still levels of respect and etiquette and rules yeah. that you had to abide by, so even even form. even doing wrong. You had rules. Yeah. And there was there was consequences for. Did y'all hear what she just said to me? No. no. She was like, "Can I borrow your car and go to the side show in San Jose?" I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna be able to yeah, do we're that. Gonna one. Able to do that. Yeah, that one ain't gonna work. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Go on, yeah. <laughs> I've been to the side show with a borrowed car before, though. Yeah. Like I think I went there once, and my mom's car just prayed it didn't get hit. Oh shit! But, me too. Yeah. <laughs> Several <laughs> times. <laughs> Several. There's no there's no etiquette. There's no training. There's no... Now, where does this breakdown come of why the youth today seem to be so hyper-violent? Because there's always been violent niggas. I mean, remember, it seemed like to me when Oakland was getting 180 murders, 190 murders, when you look at the ratio of population to murders, Oakland was way more dangerous, but I never felt afraid. Mm -hmm. I Mm -hmm. never felt afraid. Now, sometimes I'll be feeling... Uh, leery, you know, go to gas. I be feeling leery on shit when, yeah. when Oakland was murder wise, statistically wise, number wise, mm-hmm. was probably twice as violent as it is now. Right. I never remember fe- feeling any. Maybe I was young and stupid at the but, time. But youngsters are on different shit now. Than yeah, yeah. Like they on different. different shit, and they <laughs> they the product of some of our generation's fortunes. That's true. Um, and the thing is, it's just like science teaches you a bunch of things. Science will teach you a lot if you pay attention. So if I get a pot and I put some water in it and I boil the water and I throw a frog in it, the frog going to jump out once he touches the hot water. He react instantly. But if I put that same pot of water and it's there... And I put the frog in while the water's regular temperature, and then I turn the aisle up, and the water's temperature's rising, and I turn it up some more, but it's subtly rising. The frog ain't gonna jump out because his body's adapted and adjusted to it. And next thing you know, it's boiling, and the frog is dead. That's the same with society what we live in. That, that's what we're dealing with. 
we dealing with a cesspool of uh, manufactured mayhem. I'll call it that. And it's set to go along just the way it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Well, also, the wild young, I was looking at my Go Dumb USA video the other yeah. day. And the wild youngsters 20 years ago is they parents now. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Exactly. <laughs> that, exactly. The, 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 the pre hyphy crowd are uh, grandparents now. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I don't have no grandkids. Thank God. I got 23 year olds and a, and a 17 year old. I don't have no grandkids. I'm grateful right now. But this, these these generations, the gap, and like my brother said, I no instruction. Right. Because people that was featured on your video, mm -hmm. they're. One of their kids is caught, mm -hmm. in, caught in this current situation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you you absolutely it's, right. It's a lack but, of instruction. But shout out to all the the victims and yeah, that, please, that shooting, especially up. especially the ones who were doing just simply at work. Uh, yeah. Can you no, imagine what? being at work? Like I got a pretty kickback job with the county, but I can't imagine a scenario where I'm going along my little School duties and suddenly somebody's hitting me with. Hot lead because I'm obviously not on the turf. I'm not involved in any activities that would you would think. Well, if you're out here on this hot ass block, some shit can happen to you. When you at work walking down the hallway and you get shot, that got to be the biggest what the fuck feeling. Mm -hmm. Like what the fuck is going on? Like how am I shot? And especially if you've been through some things and you got your life on track and now you're at work. Yeah. And some motherfuckers come in looking for another motherfucker. Right. And shoot you. That got to be the wildest fucking feeling while you laying there bleeding like. Yeah, like I ain't got niggas shit. really coming here shoot me over another nigga. Hmm? All right, folks, on to my next stop. All right. I will see y'all tomorrow. Hey, see you tomorrow, for sure. Right. See you tomorrow, Rand. Yeah. Yeah. Needs so, to bring anything? Uh, I mean, it never hurts to bring a bottle. Yeah. Hey, I ordered that too. Hey, Amen. Yeah, uh, I'm a little short on tequila for the, uh, the drink mixer. All right, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> hey, Graham, you still got that fancy toilet? Come on, why are you asking? Okay. <laughs> I'm there. I ain't even gonna lie, man. I am so happy to have Tiff in the building once yeah. again. Uh, it's been it's been a while since Tiff blessed us with her presence, know, especially her presence. Tiff, on Tiff is. I'm always here. Tiff is the Good. official third co-host. So, so of the tell show. us, so tell us, Tiff, what's been going on with you? Man, no. LDs, what's happening? A lot of things been happening out in the out in the town, man. What's been? You been all right? I've been, I've been okay. Mhm. Mm um, you safe, chilling. Yeah, I be worried though. I be worried. Yeah, it's it's too much going on. It's, it's a lot going on. It's de it's really, de it's like depressing. Yeah. yeah. Like you know. Well, like I was saying earlier. There was a time in the early 90s, which was more of my era, when I was in my prime, I was a young man then, mm -hmm. and it would be 180 murders, 190 murders. Like, every year would be the all-time most murders. And not only 180 murders, 400 other people get shot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, all kinds of shit. Like, like, it's 365 days in a year, and Oakland would have 800 shootings, meaning two, three motherfuckers was getting shot. Average. Every day. single day. Some niggas I knew was getting shot multiple times. I get shot, uh -huh. go to the hospital, come back out, get shot again. Unlucky niggas. But the thing is, is that I never felt no fear on these streets. Uh -huh. I went to every party, every function, everywhere. I pull up everywhere and holler at who I want to. I felt no fear. I don't know if it's because I'm old now and I don't move the same, but it ain't even as violent now as it was then. And now I go certain places and I'm like, oh fuck that. I ain't getting no gas there. Oh I'm shit, I ain't going to that st that I ain't store. going to that store. You know what I'm saying? When it used to be a store, I pull up and be like, What's happening with y'all? Nigga, move out from the doorway. Now I'll be like, fuck it, it's another store somewhere selling that. Yeah. And I don't know if it's I just feel like even though Oakland was extremely violent during that period, we were it was usually gangsters we were going tune. against gangsters. We were now in I tune. Feel like it's more random shit going on. That's, that's what scared me because I think that's because if you didn't we sell dope, tune. a fucking nigga's bitch who did sell dope, you was yeah. pretty much good. Yeah. And now it's like a nigga could be blocking the doorway, and you could tell the nigga, "Hey, can I get by?" 
And they, like, yeah, like the. And now they're going to do was, something to you. They were driving down, the one guy that would had his dash cam, he was driving down, was at San Leandro Boulevard, and the mm-hmm. truck pulled. I seen and, that. And dude yeah. jumped out the truck, motherfucker, and started shooting. Like, that's crazy. That's what Road matters. rage. And me, don't get me wrong, I, 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 I have medium road rage. I just hate stupid people. But. I'm never going to be to the point to where I want to flash on somebody, you know. I have road rage and shit. I've never had And I just be like, you know something, it's cool. Motherfucker trying to skirt over. I'll be like, man, go ahead, dude. It's cool. As long as you don't hit my shit and try to skirt out, because I had that happen before me. I got T-boned before. Shit, I just got and my car back And the motherfucker backed out and skirted out. And I was like, you motherfucker. When did niggas start stealing dogs? Man, they shooting niggas, niggas and taking their dogs. Niggas. niggas and starts stealing because, designer dogs. Because, you know why? They'll shoot you over this dog. You know why? Breaking in houses. You know why? Why? Because the illusion of some of value that all these people, and I blame social media, you got all these celebrities and all these people that want to have these cute-ass little dogs and shit that... Nobody want to have a little janky ass dog, the the the, <laughs> the seven layer dog that's mixed with seven dogs. And you nobody want to who like you who always have. Nobody want to have a Cisco. Have a nobody want to have a dog named <laughs> Cisco no more. Duck, you feel <laughs> me? <laughs> nobody. <laughs> my dog just have just a, having a, a German pit Shepherd, a pit bull, <laughs> uh, uh, a beagle maybe, or a dog that just bite motherfuckers on command. No, <laughs> niggas want to have these soft ass dainty dogs. And hey, shit. my dog would have a and pit bull head. Labrador body. That's what's wrong with me. I always had that's a, what happened. I always, my dog was always like, okay, that's a one night. Nice, my dog was always that's a one night nice stand dog. Nigg- niggas went to wanting to have dainty dogs. Hey, but speaking of robberies, do y'all see the mama, the the daddy, the stepmama, and the seventeen year old was a, yeah for the PMB. This nigga sent this nigga oh. sat in the car and sent his son in there. To shoot, to to kill this nigga and rob him for them chains. With an ankle monitor on. Wait, wait. The seventeen-year-old had an ankle monitor on. That, uh, that it, once again, low vibrational. Now that's incredibly low intelligence. Wait a like y'all was I retarded. Just, I didn't know that part. So yeah. he went to yeah. do the crime of all. They was crimes. already at the parking yeah. lot. With from what the, it says, um, ankle monitor. He actually went and got his son. Another nigga was in the parking lot, seen him. I guess mm-hmm. they called dude. They see him on the server. They see dude pull up. They chop it up. Dude go get his son and send his son in there while he park around the corner. Son going there. Sh- even shoot dude while he on the ground. They mm-hmm. rob him. Like, nigga, y'all in broad daylight on camera. How did you even? I ain't mad at the 17-year-old because, okay, you ain't got a full brain. But your 40-year-old daddy didn't be like, we can't get away with this. Niggas gonna know There's, it was us because the thing is, people, and 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 I'll say this: there's responsibility on both ends. One, you have stars, people who've been in their life in in Southern California who tell you, motherfucker, we don't even wear hella jewelry in out in different places and we that from bad, here. That was bad decision making on his and I, part. And I'm not saying that you being able to want to wear what you want to wear should contribute to your death. I'm not saying that completely. But, you, but, you gotta have but a what I'm saying wisdom. is you have to you can't let your ego get you put in compromising circumstances. And what happens is and it's not this brother. Because he got too many videos of him talking about I ain't never been robbed. And this you can't. Ego that's, that's the per, that, that, and, and once again, no disrespect or nothing to this brother because this, this young king deserved to live a life and, and watch his kids and grow. Walk, walk his kids jewelry, down the to. aisle. It, every, all of us deserve to to have these things. But you got to have wisdom. But you have to put real life in real life, in real time. Because my kids having me around is not is not worth more is not worth less than me showing these niggas I ain't shook. Like I said, hey, right, I pull up in front of stores sometimes. Like I just pulled up, like I was I hit the corner on seventy third and Mac, and I decided that I was gonna get me it's a little shot of yak to have me a nightcap. Mm-hmm. I tried to pull up at the store over there That's by Grandma's. Crap. By grandma's kitchen, right? Mm-hmm. It was so many roguish looking niggas out there that I said, fuck it. 
Mm-hmm. When there was a time in my life, I ain't gonna lie that I would have got out just because it was so many niggas out there that yeah. to show niggas I ain't shit. But I ain't got nothing to prove now, yeah. and I live past I my foolishness. So I go to pull up. It's so many niggas out there looking just like, oh fuck this. Yeah. So I'm like, I'll go to the Stone 82nd and Mac. So I keep pushing. I get the mm-hmm. 82nd and Mac. There's more niggas, man. So I'm like, fuck it. Then I get the 90 <laughs> and Mac. Hella wild looking niggas out there, even more than the other two spots. So I drove my ass to Foothill Square mm-hmm. and went in there, and the motherfucker went and the unlocked the liquor and, and gave it to me. Yeah, I'm in the, <laughs> well, now I'm in the grocery <laughs> store that because there was better prices. But here's the thing not only the better prices, but there was. My life wasn't in danger no more. Nah, the parking lot was well lit. There too, but but yeah. the thing was, is that there you was. Can't put yourself from in 73rd and Mac. There was three liquor stores in a row that I pulled up in front of, and I said, whoo, these niggas look suspect. Mm. Right, hey, but that real. just goes to but show that we, you got to have some discernment. And here goes the thing. Yeah. I'm driving a regular car. P&B Rock was in a Bentley. Mm-hmm. I'm driving a regular yeah. car in a, in a T-shirt. Mm-hmm. P&B Rock was in a Bentley with 300 racks in jewelry on. And I said... I ain't going up this spot. These niggas look. And, these niggas look shady. And the average cat ain't making six figures. You got that's to say now, and that's not to blame P and B Rock for his own death and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Rest in peace. He should have been able to. That. He should have been able to pin his money to his chest and sit there and enjoy a nice meal with his family. But that's what time, you should be. If you have reality to have is security with you. Reality is, if you having it a certain way. Gotta be cautious. And P and B Rock, you had two little kids. It was more important that you make it back home safely to live that baller life with them and let them live that good life mm-hmm. than it was to prove to niggas that you wasn't shook. Right. And you know, fuck fuck these niggas. You ain't got nothing to prove to these niggas. You don't. And your your only competition is you in the mirror. Yeah. Trying to prove a point to, to crack cause the cause the niggas that killed him. The son, the father, the other nigga, the bra set up, man, they crash test dummies, man. Probably wasn't even one GET, GED between all four of them, man. <laughs> Fuck them, man. You ain't got nothing to prove to them niggas, man. All right, for real. Y'all, y'all out there. Because anybody that would have said, well, yeah, he still was a real and, nigga, and I'd be like, you fucking idiot. He's a dead like, real nigga. That's like the Vikings. When they say uh, for them to go to Valhalla, they oh, yeah, got a die on battle with your sword in your hand. Yeah, they was inbred idiots. That's some, yeah, that's some. That's a trip because you know he did an interview. Mm-hmm. I want to say a week or two beforehand, and yeah. he said, um, "I think the guy asked him, um, round trip how did he, um, huh? The round trip said he spoke into assistance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Ain't that a trip? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's dope." But then we finish your finish round trip, yeah. Sorry for interrupting. Finish your sentence. I duck finished it. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Cause there's one thing I've learned living the majority of my life in these ghettos is that if you subconsciously looking for something, it will come. It will. And if you really looking for, and I'm just sorry, I've been doing this since, since the '90s, and. Every time I see a motherfucker die, who if they were to exercise a little bit, of, no matter how many times I see it, even in my own family, shit like that, every time I see a person die, that if they were to exercise a little bit of caution, Emotional they'd be all right. Then I just feel bad. Different. And like I said, I don't want to fall into the, oh, nigga, shouldn't have did, you know, like, because, man, you're right. In the perfect world, <laughs> you should be able to go any way you want. Right. And you can't never blame a nigga because some, some rat, Snake motherfucker okay. took their life, but who God was damn. the um? There was another father son duo that commit allegedly committed a um a murder, both of them, and they end up getting caught up. But the father now is going to testify against, against the K- son. I'm talking about KSO. Oh, that's KSO. The rapper, oh, okay. Yeah, the Where rapper, they, ja- they was out of Jacksonville, Florida. How you feel about that? I feel that there's no circumstance that my son Mm -hmm. would ever have to worry about me being on the stand. In fact, put it like this. I got three sons. Mm -hmm. One's a crash test dummy. One is just a mediocre nigga out here living, and one got potential. The nigga that's mediocre and the nigga with potential, Mm -hmm. 
I would take the case. Fuck it. I did it. You do the Cut OJ. that nigga leg. Cut that nigga loose. The crash test dummy, I just wouldn't say nothing. How Y'all just <laughs> put the evidence on there. I wouldn't hang the nigga, of course. I would never hang no nigga. But I wouldn't jump out front and take the case for him. You know what I'm saying? But if they convicted me, I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? But the other ones off top, I'll be like, I did it. Let that nigga go. You know what I'm saying? But this father-son duo, apparently the father was with the activities. He was with the activities and was almost like the OG of the gang. And then when he they, he got called up, he got to talk about they got to talk about that life shit. He was like, Putting "Wow, football numbers it's up. Junior. Junior did that shit." Putting and these the same niggas up. that made them song a song that's popular on TikTok. It's that when I see you and they get to talk about all the niggas that they get weird. Corbin got shot. Yeah, oh. Ooh, got shot. Them niggas. Well, now a lot of them niggas are starting to get indicted. <laughs> and now, niggas is all telling on each other. So speaking, but of, it was all fun. It was all jokes and fun and laughter. That's when you was balling. Yeah, because that's the thing with social media and perceived relevance and likes don't... And don't get me wrong, there is a stance to where likes equal dollars now, but how many likes does it take to equal dollars or follows? That's the thing, but you got, you got people trading in common sense... <laughs> For and actually, there is no such thing as common sense. But still, but is there any if sense was common, make one of your sons? Oh, man, I go to the ends of this earth. Like I, I said, I'll take I, the death I go to the moon on a toothbrush. Well, I would take with, the death penalty to a mind. The crash test yeah. dummy. If they gave it to me, I'd take it. I wouldn't be like, oh no, y'all got it fucked up. That was blood. <laughs> but I wouldn't no. necessarily because the other ones I know. If I took the death penalty, they would probably go out and live a good life. And everybody be cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. This nigga would be in with me in within a year, and I'd be like, "Man, nigga, I'm a sacrifice for, I'm a sacrifice <laughs> for, nothing, <laughs> for nothing. You still in it? It's one thing because you know there's been a lot of situations in this world and in the town where one nigga say, "Hey, blood, I'm gonna take the case. I'm gonna tell him it was me, nigga. You go do do some what's shit. What's supposed to be done? So that has happened. But you can't." Tell the nigga, happening. go live, and then a year later, he, he walked there. through the gates, and you be like, nigga, damn, nigga. I did this for nothing? <laughs> I took this I took this weight, <laughs> now and I gotta beat your this ass. Because it's been situations where niggas oh, are saying, yeah. you know, I had a situation before when I got mm -hmm. pulled over and there was a gun underneath the seat. One nigga was with us was on parole, another nigga wasn't, and I didn't have no record, and one nigga said, I ain't gonna get you fucked off, and I ain't gonna get, let this nigga, let them fuck this nigga off on parole. I'm going to take it. But nigga, don't do no J-Cash shit. Nigga, take care of me. Uh -huh. And so we made, you know, uh -huh. book, book, make sure his baby mama was straight. You know what I'm saying? Shit, take, yeah. Come take his mama to the grocery store, this and that. Oh, because I was actually the owner of the car. So it started turning into some, uh -huh. and push come to shove. But that's that. There's a gun in the car. Then it's the, it wasn't my gun, but it was like, it's there's gonna be your gun and dude took and dude took it. That's etiquette he took, responsibility he off and that rules shit. that we were raised yeah. on that was instilled yeah. in us on certain levels that is eradicated now in this society. But I was working at a little warehouse in Fremont. I had to go do overtime and shit like that because I needed to make sure dude baby mama had diapers. You know what I'm saying? I go buy Miss So and so you need this that run me to the grocery store. Like I had to I had so to do, knew, I had to make sure dude was good. You stuck to the program. That's the whole time. Etiquette, honorable. And we still folks to this day. You got to be honorable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I did. Well, the other nigga who really could have got fucked over, who was on parole, uh -huh. didn't stick to the script. In fact, when he came over to see the baby mama, he was trying to hit. <laughs> you know, fuck it. He dead now, so you know, ain't like I'm airing the nigga out. He dead now, but he didn't. And the real, I was just a bonus like, oh, yeah, they're going to fuck you over, too. But they was he was really trying to say this nigga because this nigga was on parole and that nigga didn't do right at all. You know, may he rest in peace. But he didn't do right. If he can see watch down on this nigga, you know you didn't do right. That sucks. But um, it is. Uh, I want to know some more about what's going on with Tiff. We uh, we have five. Yeah. How's Beta Wheeler then, man? How's Shout that out to Beta. Shout out to Beta. Um, actually, be, sorry. Sorry about that. Beta is is doing 
foil. He's from the best rappers in the town. I've always so, been amazed that he's not so bigger. Underrated. Yeah, and that's everyone says that. Because the talent is the talent is there, and it's yeah. been there. He's been displaying the talent for over a decade. Definitely. Definitely. Um, that's yeah. how funny this rap game really is. is. You can look at really talented individuals, and while he's gotten some local shine, he's recognized this and that. Mm-hmm. I would have thought with his talent and the quality of work that he's been putting out. That you know he'd be on them the national charts like that and that national tours and shit. But that's like what we was talking about um, the other week when I was speaking on us. We don't, and when I say we, I'm including mm-hmm. me, but I support my people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, us I as do. a whole, the Bay Area as a whole. Go ahead. Um, you look at all these different areas. You know the South and whatnot. They they get behind they people a hundred. And don't get me wrong, Vita got plenty of love in the Dubs in the town and whatnot. But everybody everybody don't jump behind everybody and be like, "Come on, you the one. Let's push." You know, when it benefits them, right? It's what can you do for me? That's going and. One thing I'll never do none of that. I ain't into that. I'm like, go on, let's do it. I got you. I'm rocking with you. I fucks with Beta, as you know, and I I was even waiting Cuzzo, and I was knocking Cuzzo today. You already know I'm still fucked with that. But uh, everything, you know, you gotta support your people because that's who they need. It's just you look at industry, whether it's rap, singing. Same with a person in jail. Take this analogy with me, because I'm going to go here deep with y'all. Uh-huh. The same way they want you to put some money on their books in jail, you need to put some support on the books of your people who out who's doing things and got the talent. The same way, like you said, the stories of... Because I, I know these situations and stories that have happened because I've witnessed some where it's a it's a it's a kid with talent whether it's sports or whatever that's going to go make some moves and they caught in a situation with some with some you know some thoroughbred people who was like bruh this ain't your this ain't your lane we going to take care of this you need to you need to go on and and be big and do what you're going to do in the light cuz you going you going to be the light for this area, that's what need to happen more. Yes, yes, indeed. The OGs got to look out for the up and comers, especially the ones who got real potential to make something happen, and not in no exploitive way. Like, oh, I'm gonna be a manager and I'm gonna extort you, and you know, mm-hmm. and all that type of shit. But really, just look out. Make sure niggas ain't getting caught up in no beef. Right. Making sure if other niggas try to put pressure on them, that they know, nigga, I'm behind him. Mm-hmm. So uh, don't interfere with his path. You know, exactly. just saying, just be, just, just be a foundation. Right. And that's right. not, to, and that's not too much to ask. You know, especially some of us who have gotten to a certain age, some man. Be, be, be a foundation, man. Give some. Give some good game. Give some advice. Not no self-centered game or no, it's only going to benefit you. Oh, nigga, you really going to talk with the people? Go and sign a contract with me and then go up in there. and You know, no, like, for real, man. All right. I mean, fuck with it. Give back a little bit, man. You done fought them wars. You 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 ain't afraid of nothing, man. Go on there. Fight on them youngsters' behalf and let them youngsters win. Yeah, we got you know what I'm saying? Even if you didn't get a chance to win. Well, you know what the obstacles and the pitfalls is waiting, man. Make sure the youngster avoid that. Right. Chase off niggas who don't, you know you can see. Like, that nigga ain't even cool. Get that nigga away from him. Tell him, hey, man, that blonde right there, man, that's a rig up, man. Get the niggas, get the niggas some right. game, man, that they can I, really use. I, me, my brothers, and people I know, we've been in situations where we've been in situations and people have come to me like, hey, y'all, y'all need to move to the left. And don't get me wrong, we with the shits and always have been. But there's like y'all doing something different and yeah, y'all with it. You will. We affiliated and, and solid with the shit, but they like, nah. Go to go this way. Or you know, hey, y'all was with such and such, that's a bad that's a bad move for what y'all trying to do. 
you know, and each one teach one. Like you said, it's etiquette and rules, and the, the mm-hmm. shit is lost in today's culture. There's no loyalty. There's no 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 bonding, no real bonding. It's always like you said, what could you do for me? Yeah. You know, and I always tell somebody, the if you want to come on my show, it's good. I don't deals. do nothing for for a return or nothing. I just like, man, I'm with people that want to do shit and get on, and let's do it. So right. that's what it's about, you know. I I don't make shit off this. I spend my money to do this out of my own pocket, you know. But this is what it do. But that's for the love of the culture and the love of what we do. And if you're really about it, that's what it do. It ain't about the return monetarily. It's about uh, the the souls and the lives you can reach. Because somebody's story is going to re- uh, resonate with somebody somewhere. And, you know, that's what's up. Mm. Tell everybody where they can find you. Well, they can find me at Feral Film. I'm on Snapchat, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, and you usually find me standing next to Renee in the pictures because she's like Shout my mentor. You she know, what Renee so, come get on camera. And basically, that's where you can find me. I can't be found. I like you. I can find you right now. She said she gonna be where she at. Um, you know. It's uh you can find me on most social media platforms. Tipology. She is the official co host of the I'm show. I'm normally the first one that pops up. There's a few imposters now. Yeah, we'll look out for the Let's imposters. Let's find them and fight them. I okay. think Gladiators. Yeah, <laughs> I'm down. You know what I mean? There can only be one. Yeah. What's that? Uh Outlander. Yeah. <laughs> Zoolander. Outlander. Oh, okay. Zoolander was a good Zoolander movie, though. Oh, okay. um, I want to thank you all for tuning in tonight. You know, I appreciate y'all that's tuning in now. Y'all that are tuning in after. Hey, for real, though, um, if y'all could do me a favor. You know, I don't ever ask y'all for nothing. But, you know, we also have uh, Cognac Confessionals on YouTube page. Like, subscribe, share. You know what I'm saying? For real. You know, we just trying to expand and grow. Uh, each one, teach one. We looking for uh, new guests to come on. So if you or someone you know is interesting and have a story to tell and is willing to come here and sit with us and chop it up, tap in. You know, we we, we, we about building. And uh, peace to our guests that was supposed to be coming on tonight. Yeah, right? our, our blessings because and Because I understand that you know they got to have a vigil for the family. They all up at Highland, you know, and they've yeah, been holding vigils around the clock since we'll tap the in. shooting. But, yeah. uh, we'll tap hey, in. We'll tap in. Y'all got our respect and prayers. Um, like we said, summer is over. It's fat guy fall. <laughs> we in. It's teddy bear season, nigga. Teddy bear season. Uh, Shout out to my brother, Duck. Love you, bro. Uh, everybody else tuned in. Appreciate you wholeheartedly. Uh, next week, we are here again. You can find us here. We'll always be where we're at. Um, hey, but most seriously, though, um, take care of yourselves, man. Mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally. Look out for each other. Um, we got to do We got to do better with what we allow ourselves to absorb because the world is full of toxic shit and I'm not just talking about fumes. Mm -hmm. Music, creativity, the content we take in, all that shit is wearing at your inner psyche. Whether you know it or believe it or not, it is. And you gotta be you gotta be cognizant of that. And if you're not, please get involved in helping your neighborhood become a better neighborhood. Because if there is no hood, mm-hmm. there's no neighbors. And all your neighbors won't look like you. And they'll be walking dogs that niggas <laughs> be trying to steal. And want imported coffee with fucking garlic popcorn and some bullshit that the Niner fans be on. But that's another story. Go Raiders. 
uh, at the end of the day, once again, I appreciate everybody for tuning in. I'm Deshaun, your host, Mr. Keep It Cloudy. The man with Thank the plan. You for out. God bless you. Good night. God bless you. Good night. And now it's time to say goodbye to, to all, all my Negro friends. Hey, man, it's Friday. Be safe.